My name is Ahmed Ali Mohammed Al Mukhani and I live in Al Hail Al Janubia. I always describe myself, I think this is the first line of my CV, I am a global citizen who tries to um, pursue the cause of God um, and try to spread the word of God as a manifestation of God to all human, human beings. I think that's perhaps a good explanation, a good description for myself. Um, I'm very traditional as well, a classicist. Um, uh, I like my kids very, very much. Uh, I like my work. I like everything around me, alhamdulillah. I'm blessed with four boys, uh, Ali, Muhammad, Yusuf, and Nasser. Uh, my wife's name is Suad. Uh, we've been married now for about 10 years. And um, I work at the elected chamber of the parliament, and I'm the assistant secretary general for information there. I'm responsible for all the parliamentary research papers, uh, briefing to members, to the chairman. Um, my department is also responsible for IT. Um, and we, look, we do actually a lot of things uh, for the members and the staff. And, um, we are also responsible uh, to coordinate, uh, for coordinating some training programs for the staff and induction programs for members of the Majlis, Majlis Ashura. And it's been very rewarding, alhamdulillah. I've been very lucky as well <clears throat> because um, when I joined the Majlis in 1999, I actually, every two years, I changed jobs. So I've never got bored uh, during my work in the Majlis. And before that, I worked in the university for four years. And then I also worked at the American Embassy in Muscat for two years. So I've changed kind of hats and areas and so forth, which I think was very, very good for me. It, um, I learned a lot, put it this way, I really, really learned a lot. In 1985, when I first went to the UK to do my uh, diploma, and after the diploma, um, I did my degree. And while England was always depicted for us as Victorian England, but also there was a lot of demonization uh, here of the West and of the people and their ethics, their values. But when I went there, I was received very well by the family that I befriended, by people of the church, my neighbors. So I started questioning the the epistemological base that I was given or handed over. So I explored Christianity, I explored Judaism, I explored Islam from a different perspective altogether. Then I realized that God is much greater than all these three and he cannot be confined in one of these three. Uh, I decided then that Islam was perhaps the most appropriate faith or course to pursue, but I should you know, uh, explore every opportunity to deal with the other, uh, you know, manifestations of God or the ways to God. Yes, I was mainly focused on Judaism and Christianity, but I also made friends with Hindus, Sikhs, you know, Jain, from Jainism, and uh, I talked to them, and I even had atheist friends. I just talked and talked and talked and tried to learn. And that led me, uh, in 1989, to co-found the first... Um, interfaith group I was in, involved with, and it was, it is Jewish Islamic Christian Friendship Association, which is the acronym I use in my email, Jikva. And um, um, there were two Jews, two Christians, and myself as a Muslim, and we were later joined by another Muslim. And we actually had a lot of uh, learning experience. Um, it was trying to understand the other, because the other two Faith. I mean, the, the two Christians and the two Jews have, have also heard a demonized version of Islam. And I thought, and we all thought, that uh, the personal dimension was a very great dimension to add in any faith experience. And that's where I started. And then when I came to Oman, um, that urge was maintained and I couldn't stop it. So uh, uh, Divine Providence brought uh, me to Al Amana Center. They had uh, Harold Vogler from Chicago Seminary, and, um, and they also were giving a talk about the, the history of the Amana Center, the RTA mission in Oman. 
And I felt that that was the place I would like to work with. So I went ahead and I approached them and I said to them, I'm, I, this is what I've done and I'm interested in doing Christian Muslim work. And they were very pleased to have me around. So uh, we started, we founded what we called the Christian Muslim Majlis and the Christian Muslim Forum. And the Majlis was uh, more of a kind of an Omani version of a council, uh, but it was more focused on core group of interested people. And we talked about a lot of, uh, you know, theological issues as well as personal issues. But the forum was more to the public. And it was once a month for the forum, but once a week for the majlis. And um, we did a lot of discussion. We had a lot of uh, exchange of gifts and ideas. And, you know, I think love of God was there and really was strong. You know, it was the binding force for us. And, um, and then, you know, situations in Oman, you know, required that this forum would, and the, and the majlis needs to change. So, um, and the Manor Center started doing something more institutional with the Ministry of uh, Awqaf and Religious Affairs. And that's where I stopped be dealing with them directly uh, because I don't have an official capacity. But I do still continue working with the Amana Center when they have groups uh, who are interested in Islam, who would like to see a Muslim who is willing to share his faith, to share his experience, his life. And the challenge I always pose to people, you know, offend me. I don't think anybody can offend me with any question. And if anybody can, you know, satisfy or, you know, meet that challenge and offend me, I will take them out for dinner. And the shop <laughs> so it didn't happen so far. So I saved myself some money. I think I might be treading on difficult and dangerous grounds here because. Um, I, I was asked one same question, and I said, I see God in everything, you know, in the child when he smiles, or when she smiles, or when she cries, in beautiful things around me, and, you know, even in sadness, I see God. And I was kind of reminded that, you know, this is more of a Sufist and more of a, the kind of the unity uh, of God approach, which I still subscribe to. Um, I would like to refer to a verse in the Quran, which is a beautiful verse. It's, it basically says that um, God is light. His light has no bounds, no limits. It shines everywhere. And, uh, you know, it feels like fire. But the moment you touch it, you feel it's not fire. It's just blessing. But it's light all over the place. And I think that's what God is for me. God is light. Um, not that... In the darkest moments of my life, I would always resort to God. He would always help me. Even I'm blessed that uh, when, uh, when I'm very happy, I would remember to thank Him. It is very easy for people to forget to thank God when they are happy, when they don't need Him, if one can use that term. But I'm blessed to remember. He, God reminds me to thank Him, to praise Him, when, uh, when I'm enjoying his gifts, and to, to be close to him and ask him when I need his help. Have there been experiences along the way in your life, though, that increased your faith? I mean, ever since 1985, I mean, that was the moment of truth in my life. When I went to the UK, as I mentioned to you earlier, and the way I describe it, I found God. In 1985, I found God. I found Him in me, in people. As I said, I could not see that God can be confined in anything. And I found that God, you know, the, the closer you approach Him, the closer you want to go through to Him, He would come closer to you. And since then, my experience has been, you know, incremental. Every event in my life uh, has been very much a, a revival, you know, uh, experience. I mean, I also have been reminded and blessed by God that I now stop and think. You know, if, for instance, you know, I manage to be in time for an appointment, I thank God for it. It's a blessing. Uh, if something, if I pray for something and it happens, 
then I pray for it, praise God for it. And if I pray for something that doesn't happen, then I also praise God for it. This, I think a lot of us sometimes forget about this moment of pausing and thinking, and thinking and thanking God for it. And I think that has been the experience. Uh, I said it's been incremental between every day in my life. I cannot say that there has been one single uh, event that has really uh, rejuvenated my uh, faith in God or strengthened my faith in God, save, as I mentioned to you earlier, that moment of discovery. You know, I've been to churches, to cathedrals. I tried to go to synagogues. I wasn't actually allowed in for various reasons. But anyway, I made it to read about Judaism. And, um, and I remember that you know, I had a lovely garden in, in the house I was in, in Derby. And um, I was just looking after the house, doing the chores, and thinking. And then I went back to my room and I prayed. And um, I started thinking about the question, to whom God belongs? Am I on the right track? Am I on the wrong track? Where would I go? Um, you know, and then I realized it's, uh, God is more merciful than to take us into you know, to think about him in terms of hell or in terms of heaven, he's much greater, you know, than anything that we can think of. And I felt that there's a sense of peace and also light that came unto me. And I can't describe the moment, but it was a resurrection perhaps. It was a moment that I felt that God is listening to me he has come unto me, he's told me that, okay, you are on the right track. There is nowhere that can be confining to God. Honey, in a way, he asked me to, to follow my heart, to follow beauty, to follow light. And I think that's it, really. I mean, that moment, I remember it was a murky evening. However, in the UK, it was a bit rainy. But uh, my room... I would always treasure that room. If the room was filled with light, I just, I felt, I mean, I said, a sense of peace. Uh, and, you know, I felt that I was blessed, I was guided. But, you know, and my happiness, I mean, I filled with so much joy and happiness, I couldn't actually hide. I could have almost danced and went out, but, you know, it's, it was lovely. That's it, really. And from that moment onward, I just was filled with the joy of God, you know, just the joy of God. It was wonderful, really wonderful. I'm grateful for God that he has created me the way I am, that he provided me with the opportunities I have uh, come across, that he shaped me the way I am with all my shortcomings and my goods. I'm grateful for him for um, recognizing my efforts to reach him. I'm very grateful for him for giving me four lovely boys. Um, I felt, I still do, that through my kids I can give back to the world. Um, and I keep telling them, you know, what I want from them is just to be good global citizens, nothing else. You know, they can be experts, they can be genius, they can be scholars, but extra. But they have to be good global citizens to feel for the world and to, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. Um, I think that's what I'm mainly grateful for. But you know, there are all sorts of things. I mean, one is grateful for God, for the blessing that we live, that we're blessed to enjoy everything around us. Um, I've also been taught that even in sickness, there is a blessing. Um, there are two ways of looking at sickness. It's a purifying experience, and also it's uh, a, you know, physically it's a moment for the body to recuperate, to remind you that you are a weak being. No matter how you know powerful you think you are, how knowledgeable you are, you know a mosquito bite will put you down. So simple. When I was a kid. I wished that I could speak all the languages of the world. 
and I always imagined myself as a machine. You just press this button, I speak this language, this button, I speak this language. And as I grow, and as I'm growing now, I'm learning that there is one language that speaks all. Uh, the language of love, the language of faith. And I've actually been through experiences. When I managed to control or direct my attitude towards the other, my attitude spoke you know, thousands and thousands of words without me saying a word. Um, so faith, as I said to you earlier, I found that faith is a common language, particularly now. I'm finding that more and more people are going back to their faith. Um, and it's easier for me to speak to somebody who has a faith, no matter what that faith is, because then we, we are on the same wavelength. We have sacredness that we respect. Um, we have some code of conduct and ethics that we respect. And that would actually will take us along together. Um, so perhaps I would like, my greatest wish is for faith to prevail. Faith in God to prevail. Not faith in money. Faith in God. I am a Muslim with a simple, with a, uh, with a small m. A Muslim with a small m, lowercase m, means a person who submits his or her will to God. A Muslim with a capital M is the Muslim that we know that accepts the, uh, the five pillars of Islam, accepts Muhammad as a prophet, I'm not going. I'm not denying that I do believe in the faith, the the uh, five uh, pillars of Islam. I am a Muslim with a capital M, but I think my role in the world is better defined with a small M. I'm a person who can understand the others, hopefully, and um, who submits his will to God. So perhaps. I would like them to understand that I'm a person who submits his will to God, trust God, yeah. and in God we trust. There's a very interesting lesson in Islam that I have learned a long time ago. It's not to listen, you know, not to listen blindly. There is a burden of finding, a burden of pursuit upon each individual, one of us. If I hear, you know, for instance, I heard about the, the Pope's speech, which, you know, it was said that he spoke negatively about Islam. I learned my lesson, so I didn't believe it. I went, I took the speech out, I read the speech. I was fortunate to have people who are very close to the Pope. I spoke to them, they clarified to me his position, then I understood exactly what he meant. This is only an example. If each one, if any one of us hears anything and this or whatever they heard made them perplexed, they should really go and find out. Don't take it as it is, find out. Then if you made your effort and you found out whatever you know is there, the truth, then you have done your bit. And then you can't blame yourself if at a later stage you found that, you know, you were wrong. But if you haven't done your homework, you have all reasons to blame yourself. So it just, I think it's a duty for us towards God to search and find anything that is taught to us. I would actually <clears throat> maybe recite uh, the opening chapter, which, uh, which is a perfect project for uh, uh, interfaith dialogue because it's very similar to Lord's Prayer. Oh. So whenever we actually have Christian Muslim dialogue, we actually bring the, the Lord's Prayer and the Al Fatiha and we we read them because the Al Fatiha is the chapter that we are supposed to uh, recite very frequently. You know, uh, so in every uh, prayer, it's recited more than once. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين 
الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين Thank you very much Thank you very much Thank you, Thank you.